So, Adam, did you watch All Out? It wasn't it a great show. What was your favorite part? It was absolutely the greatest pro wrestling show I have ever witnessed at any point in my entire life. I was blown away, man. You didn't watch it, did you? No. How dare you accuse me of something like that, though? I mean, it. What are, what are you doing? I'm not selling for you. Ow! That left a mark. It's not my fault. It, it, it six F prevented me from watching it. Six F. Uh, five G. Ow! That left a. Ow! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's time for a brand new episode of As the Buckle Turns, episode 191. We're getting close to 200. I'm Adam. I'm Tim, and you know what that means. What? Break out the 91 jokes. There, no, just nine. (laughs) It's only nine jokes allowed, allowed around here. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, how you doing out there? Right away, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Join that notification squad. You know all the cool things to do. Be the cool kid around your neighborhood. Tell your friends about the show. Um, you do realize telling people to be the cool kid is not cool anymore. All right, don't be the cool kid in your neighborhood. <laughs> all right, just, I, I got you to say that's all I care. All right, anyway. <laughs> yes, we have a packed show for you. And no, we're not talking about Pac, the wrestler, who is, yes, still in AEW, because he's just trapped over in England. Yes, he's <laughs> trapped at home because people won't let him come to the U.S. anymore. <laughs> well, anyway, but yes. we do have a packed show, and... We'll cover AEW All Out. Yes. We'll cover some stuff from AEW Dynamite. Maybe. We got some ratings. We got some news. But we're going to dive right in to the most important thing of all. Jim Cornette defended AEW. Hell has frozen over. Grab two of each animal. Head for the border, ladies and gentlemen. Fuck it. Run away. <laughs> the apocalypse is upon us. See, I, did, I had to bring that up because I forgot to mention that in I, the, when we planned out the show. I had no idea where you were going for a moment there. <laughs> it was like, I compl- completely forgot to put down the thing. So we'll talk about this right now really quickly. I, holy crap. Hell <laughs> has frozen over. Yes. And not Michigan. So, so quickly before we get to all out um, results... Basically, what happened is Sean Long Sapp basically condemned um, fans for um, making fun of WWE um, Thunderdome. What was it? Thunderdome? Oh, no. Making, basically telling the people on the Thunderdome for cheering at a certain point, booing, basically directing their crowd. Okay. Went to Tony Khan coming out and asking the fans who are now coming back to the shows. Yes. Um, at 10% capacity um, to please not swear on there and he's making fun of them like oh the people are making fun of WWE for directing the um the thunderdome but they're not gonna um like, and tony khan responded saying well the network directly asked me to yeah um for it because there's one thing about fit, uh, the wrestlers swearing in the, the ring um and as a reaction but having people constantly say holy shit yeah, or, or it's too fuck. much. It's it's well, too and, much. And with the lower amount of people in the crowd, one person screaming that suddenly yeah. stands way out. Now having a full packed house and just the natural crowd noise, it, it, you that, barely well, hear it. You can you can make it out, but you have to really listen to it. Yeah, but e- Sean, except for like the holy shit moments. Yeah, which I have no problem with a little holy shit chant, especially when something crazy happens. Yeah. but. Normally, it's almost unnecessary. Yeah, but so Sean Orsap was basically mocking Tony Khan for this, and Jim Cornette came to Tony's defense, saying, "Tony, I got this. You that, worthless piece of shit!" Like that, basically mocking him, um, saying like, "What he, he's doing a good business move of trying to comply with a company." Yeah, that is because you don't know what it's like to deal with networks. Because you no, don't do anything, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, wow. Now, this is not the first time Jim Cornette has defended AEW on 
network decisions, stuff like that. Tony Khan, uh, and no, stuff like it's... that. It's so, but it's rare. But it's one of those things because Jim Cornette has Jim Cornette has dealt with people yes. on the corporate side of network stuff like that. Oh yeah, throughout wrestling, so he understands that. And he understands it. I agree. I mean, but there is a massive difference between asking the audience to re- to refrain from swearing. Yep. And coaching the audience to cheer. Yes. Uh, now we'll get to that in a part in a second. But like, and all Tony was kind of was doing, he was, was asking. He didn't yeah. say don't swear. He said, please uh, refrain from cursing in your chants. I understand that you guys will like, get passionate. We understand, but. Please, we would refer because of the network. If you can keep that yeah. to a minimum, at, if at, not at all, because I heard people saying "Holy crap!" I'm like, are they singing a "Holy crap" chant? Like, I didn't understand that. Now I, I now I, you I, understand it, uh, and I, I like the fact that the fans decided to go to that. Yeah, and I'm like, you know what? You're you're still doing it. Yeah, but we, you're just, it, you something that was more appropriate. Yeah, and now you're just being a slightly more appropriate. For, for U.S. television. Yeah. U.S. television is weird. Yeah. We got a problem with language, but not with, like, violence. No. Uh, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We, you know, that scene was horrible. And they're like, what, was the decapitation too much? And they're like, oh, no. No, that was perfectly fine for uh, for Saturday morning. For <laughs> Saturday morning TV. No, no, no. Uh, the fact that somebody else on the other side said, holy shit. Yeah. yeah we we got to cut that completely. And you're like... Wait, yeah. what? Yeah, it's weird. But now, if you go back to the Thunderdome, we've been directing that. We actually talked about you kind. They kind of need to do that a little bit to make the Thunderdome um, work. Because when you have the two K eighteen noises, <laughs> um, in there, I know. um, and you have a pop, and no one on the screen is popping, it looks it, it just fails. I I also so, love the fact that no one has like amazing like you can tell when somebody has like a professional camera Mm -hmm. and then everyone else like it's still like old school cam footage where you're just like it's jittery and you're like i can't tell if that guy's cam is freaking out or they just have a bad internet connection or they have a terrible internet connection and you're like is the fan really freaking out and they're like no everything froze for them because they're streaming the, the they're streaming smackdown and streaming their video at the exact same time (laughs) <laughs> Which means that all of it is just, it's not working right. <laughs> Blinked out. <laughs> so Replaced but, with Kenny Omega. <laughs> but we, we both mentioned this. Now, I will say, um, fans have every right to mock WWE for this. Oh, yeah. You know, I say that's what they need to do. But it's something you have to do to make nothing to don't work. Because when you have people, on a reaction, and you want, like, it's supposed to be getting a cheer, and it's clear based on the actions in the ring, it's supposed to be a pop moment. Or a, boot, a heat oh moment, my. it doesn't work. I'm still waiting for the day that they finally get a live audience back, and there's supposed to be a pop moment, and, they and just everyone just them. sits on their hands. Yeah. They're just like, we don't really want to pop for that, so... Yeah. I know you guys planned this. Oh, and then the and then, and then the Fiend comes out, and they're like, you're supposed to be booing this guy, and everyone pops for him instead. And they're like, no, we love the Fiend. Well, no, they, they will pop for him, and they want you to pop for him, because remember, he's the number one babyface on SmackDown now. I'm sorry, the Fiend is the number one babyface. We, we covered this already, dude. Back when Roman came back and he was a heel. Oh, I know. The whole idea was that the Fiend's supposed to be the number one babyface now. Basically, they're doing what they did with The Undertaker. Yeah. Um, is now making him the... Um, the baby face. I, I, I don't, I feel that Bray Wyatt should kind of come across as always being a baby face. Mm -hmm. Like he's a good guy. Bray Wyatt, the character, always a good guy, always positive, a little twisted, but always (laughs) positive. And the fiend is like, no, no, I, I hurt people. That's all I'm here for. Um, Well, if I hit them with my right hand, I hurt them. If I heal, if I, if I touch them with my left hand, that heals them. Now, um, if, Here's the thing, though. When you had the Undertaker eventually turn babyface, this like um, how invincible he was. Yep. Changed when he becomes babyface because babyfaces can't be invincible. I according to WWE. I know. Uh, that's not true. You can have a, a babyface monster who's just as untouchable. Yeah. Because you're actually being a monster. Um, but you have to. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But anyway, 
<laughs> I had to bring that up because I I just I saw them like, oh my god, the hell's frozen over. It did. It froze it over. over. <laughs> All right. Wait, wait, what's this? We're getting. I'm just this. Hold on. This this is just in. Yes. Uh, the weather in Hal. Uh, uh, blizzard. Uh, F five blizzard is hitting Hal right now. What are you doing? <laughs> Wait, 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 this is just in. Uh, the lake of fire is fr- uh, is starting I'm, to freeze. I'm truly sorry. Right now, hell hasn't actually frozen over. It is currently sitting at about 59 degrees Fahrenheit. We're not talking about hell, Michigan. Oh, we're, we're not? No, we're talking about actual hell. Oh. All right, never mind. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say, uh, no, it's not, because hell doesn't exist. Moving on. It, it's it's 48 in hell as well. Not Nor- hell, Norway. Oh, all right. Damn it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> had to bring that up. So let's dive right into All Out. Um, I've actually seen the show. I still have to watch it. This is not unlike WWE where we try to talk about it because and we're talking off. Not even because we read the results. We're just talking about what we heard other people talk about. That too. That too. <laughs> I, I actually have been avoiding, like, um, not not like full avoiding spoilers because I, I know, you yeah. know, who won matches. But I've been, I didn't avoiding. watch uh, Simon Miller's ups and downs. Yeah. I purposely didn't. Uh, Sean Ross is n- actually stepped away from Cultaholic right now uh, for mental health reasons. Mm. Um. So like uh, I haven't paid attention to wrestle talk. I love the fact that like my three main sources for wrestling information is from the UK. Yeah, I know. And then my fourth source, uh, g- the Going in Raw podcast with Stephen Larson. That's my fourth source. Is the only one from the US, and they're on the West Coast. Yeah. Um. So no, but I mean, it's I do find it funny since we started this. Yeah. Podcast. We went from. WWE Focus. Yes. Mocking Impact. Yep. Um, a little bit of New Japan. To we don't even watch WWE pay per views anymore. No. We it gone to the point where we don't even read the re- actual summaries anymore. Not at all. We just we find the winner, listen to someone like Wrestle Talks, we recap their recap of it, and yep. recap it here because <laughs> yep. we just don't give a fuck about WWE pay per views. I- to so little <laughs> has drawn me into their product outside of Bray Wyatt and the Fiend. I yeah. freaking love this yeah. character. But NXT, we do do watch that. Yes, I do watch the takeovers. Um, though the it is kind of, it is still hard to watch other stuff right now because it's without an, an actual audience. It's just hard to it, watch. It's, it is kind of hard. Like I even I tried to watch a couple of uh, matches from uh, New Japan. Uh-huh. And even without an audience, there's some. It's just something about. Man, I know have audiences that, over there. Well, it's still at like. It's not twenty, thirty percent, maybe fifty percent. It's better than what we have here. That's so. true. I mean, outside <laughs> of like AEW right now. Yeah. But like, I have a problem with watching Impact at all oh, right yeah. now because they have no outside sound. No outside sound. We um, make fun I, of WWE because it's a. Clearly, a pumped-in sound. Yeah, um, but that I mean, I'd rather have the no audience. If you have no audience, no sound at all. Yeah, I, I, um, everything sounds weird. Yeah. Now, at the same, the weird part is though, I've been to a number of live indie events mm-hmm. over the years, and I understand that the ring is like, even to a live audience, the ring is oddly loud. Mm-hmm. Like. I know that it's it's ramped up, of course. Yeah. And the that whole pulling back the curtain, being like, oh no, they put a microphone under the ring. They actually don't have to. Not anymore. No, because all you have to do, like, before, you know, it's the way that you set the boards, how it mm-hmm. how it's going to rattle, how tight you have the mat pushed down onto it. Uh, the see the, the yeah. It depends on the kind of uh, ring you have. If you have like the WWE standard ring where it's literally planks of wood with wrestling re- pads yep. on top of it, um, you don't. It makes a different type of noise versus the trampoline, which was uh, the secrets of pro wrestling that we would always talk about. <laughs> I was uh, every time I, I saw that, I was like, 
That bounces differently than what I see on TV. Yeah, because the different type of ring. Because yeah. the the match, the rings that they're using, they're talking about the rings that you'd see mostly on indie, small indie shows. The old, the old school '80s, early '90s yeah. small indie shows. Um, and then you had Jericho come out, and like now that the secrets of pro wrestling are out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, Nitro uh, back then, but you know it's, uh, but it's just one of those things. So I do find I, it interesting, but. Yeah, Impact. I would. I want to watch because their their product seems a little bit more interesting right now. Yeah, but I've. But without any kind of audience, it's just like, okay, guys, can we do something about like, you can turn down the the sound coming from your ring, so we're not picking up every little footstep. No, even that. It's just to me. Even when they had an audience before this, when I watch stuff of theirs, it's a performance, and there's stuff like it was just like. It, it's not the same. If you watch the stuff that on um, back with an audience a year ago, yeah, like go watch Bound for Glory last year. Then go watch Bound for Glory when AJ Styles was there. Oh yeah, no, no, there that you, was. You can. It's like you go, you, you watch that, and you go to any other place. You're getting that, but there's something about how they contact each other in Impact. Yeah. It's just it looks soft. I have to agree with you. There's something have to off agree about with it. That. Um, if they're doing it to to uh, maintain bodies in their I protect understand, and all that, I yeah, understand right. it. But there's something it, you have to find a better way to make it look more impactful. Um, it actually does hit it because yes. it's just I, I'm seeing right through it. And I I'm like nope. We're, we're not saying that you guys have to get like Bam Bam Bigelow or Vader stiff, Mm-mm. but you know Shawn Michaels, <laughs> just something because just Triple something, H figure out something else to make it look. Um, not like you're barely AJ hitting. Styles. <laughs> so, but anyway, let's get into all right. Um, the uh, the show. You have the card up there. Uh, hold on. No, you just wait a second, okay? I needed to grab a drink, okay? Anyway, yes, yes, I have the card here in front of me. <laughs> let's go ahead and start off with the first match on the buy-in. We've got Joey Janela with Sunny Kiss. Uh, defeating Serpentico with Luther. Which, oh, hey, do you have up um, our predictions? No, I do not. All right, let me go ahead and bring those we up as we well. We didn't have anything on the pre-show. Nope, we didn't. Because the, uh, the original pre-show was the tooth and nail match. That's that was got true. moved to the main show. These other two pre-shows were added um, after that. So we had nothing on the pre-show. I thought about adding it, but I'm like... I don't know if I can get that a hold of you to make a prediction. So yeah. I was like, I just left it. All right. All right. Uh, so we didn't predict it. Cool. Go, go Joey. Please yeah. don't die, Joey. <laughs> like, you are one crazy mf All right. Uh, next up, we've got Private Party. Uh, Isaiah, Ca- Isaiah Cassidy and Mark... Is it Quen or Queen? Queen, I think. Queen, okay. They say queen on TV, so that's how I always say it. All right. Uh, Isaiah and Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they defeat Alex Reynolds and John Silver. Come on, guys. Can we give them a win yet? <laughs> uh, the whole thing was a lot of people were saying is that um, how good um, Silver and Reynolds looked in this match. They Every um, match, they're re- they are actually really good. They are really good at making their opponents look like good. Like, even better. And then l- themselves looking like fools. Oh, yeah. I think, But that's the whole part thing that they're going with right now. Because you're showing them what, how good, so when they actually do do well, you they remain over. So that's how I look at it. So, okay. All right, so the next matchup was they opened the show, which I think was a mistake, which we're talking about in a few minutes. It's but, never a mistake. Uh, Big Swole... Taking on Dr. Britt Baker in a tooth and nail matchup. I'm sorry, you didn't say her name correctly. It's Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Uh, Dr. Ah. Britt Baker. (laughs) DMD. How dare you correct me, sir? (laughs) You need to throw in what she's a doctor of. Dr. Britt Baker. (laughs) Of dentistry. Dr. Britt Baker. (laughs) Yes, with Rebel. With Rebel. Um... Uh, which went 10 minutes in a cinematic matchup, which basically it was a, no. um, uh, I believe, it, I can't remember what they, it was basically, um, 
a pinfall, false count anywhere matchup, basically, is what it was. Okay, well, she won by knockout. Yeah, because uh, oh, it's she, basically an extreme rules, no, yeah, no, a, no count outs. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. Um, okay. It wasn't a bad matchup. Um, it it was what it was. It was a big mistake to open the show with this, personally. Yeah. Because it, you set your tone. I'm glad that it was on the the main card, because um, we needed more than one women's matchup on the card. Exactly. But it was the wrong thing to open the show with. Uh, um, because yeah. while mid mid card. Because and I'm, now people won't give me slack for this. Of our five people who listen to this show, all five of you, we love you guys, especially uh, you, Ryan, <laughs> especially you. I'm talking um, to you right now. But we may. Do you I'm have making... Do you have headphones on? Shut up. Am I talking right into your ear? <laughs> God. <laughs> I needed to get weird. It was either that or an... where? Wait, where, where are you going? Why are you leaving? God. All right, it's the Adam Show. Oh, hey Tim, welcome back. Next time I leave for good. <laughs> You've said that before. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I have no knowledge of this. <laughs> anyway, um, my whole reason for this was, well, it was a good matchup, uh, but this could have been a, a good bathroom break. No oh. offense to say all the women with the bathroom break, but honestly... You have mm, to have a bathroom break match on you there. Ha- you have to have somewhere, and honestly, there this was, was the only women's matchup that had a long build to it. Um, and and really outside of the outside of the I'm like looking over the card right now, outside of the eight man tag match, yeah, nothing else could have even been a break match. No, so this could have been a great little break um, for people to go use the bathroom and everything. I know you people want to watch it, but <laughs> in the arena, watching the matchup on the screen is not the same as watching these cinematic matchups. That's why I kind of feel that it would have been a gr- it it would be a great break match. Yeah. Not saying that women are the bathroom yeah. break match. There should be a we, bathroom break. You somewhere. should have one because I mean looking over the card, uh you got the next match you have is the Young Bucks versus uh, Jurassic Express. We'll get to that one in a second, okay. but the, also the reason why I say this would be a good one is because it also would have been a great way to have another like cool down match between some, another bigger match. Oh yeah. Instead of having it, you basically had these two matchups here. You want to start the main show big, but you started with a. It was a good matchup, a good thing, but it was not how you want to start your main card. Right. Right. Um, personally. But we were both wrong on this one. We both picked Britt Baker. Yeah, we did. Um, so I get uh, it. No, we did not both choose Britt oh, that's Baker. Right, you picked. I chose Big Swole. That's right. You picked Big Swole. I picked. I Big love Big her. Baker. She's um, my girl. So I can understand that this was definitely this was done definitely a cinematic match because of Britt Baker is limited. Oh yeah. From her injury still, I'm glad she was able to do something, um, and we'll get her back in the ring at some point. But. It was definitely a good one. I'm glad to see also. I'm glad to see Big Swole get a big win here on a big show, um, because it helps elevate her. Because we they need. Um, you know what? This match would have done really well right after the the battle royale. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You yeah. put this in the middle of the show. This would have been a fine spot because yeah, you didn't really need. Regardless, you can't wherever you come in the, this matchup. It's you. You're not going to miss anything important that. You get lost. What's going on? Right. Um, so, but it was over there. But ten minutes is perfect length, honestly. Yeah. Um, for it. Then you get into the Young Bucks versus Jurassic Express, where the Young Bucks won in an excellent matchup. Well, I mean, it is Jurassic Express. I did enjoy this week's BTE, where <laughs> um, kind of uh, was it this week's or last? No, it was last week's. Where uh, Matt and Nick Jackson were just like, yeah, the only way you're going to... They've constantly been ripping on uh, Luchasaurus about not doing a, a Canadian Destroyer. And they're like, it's basic. Learn a back bump. Uh, learn a front fall. Canadian Destroyer. <laughs> I'm Run run the ropes. <laughs> Canadian Destroyer. Right there. It's, it's basic move. It's basic pro wrestling. It's 101. Why don't you know how to do it? And then turns to uh jungle boy jungle boy's like seriously why 
why haven't you learned how to do it? Everyone does it. And he's like, because cause I'm afraid of Canadians. <laughs> what? My ex-girlfriend's Canadian. Oh, she was the Canadian destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> he did take one in this matchup. I, I'm i waiting. I think it's going to be... I like the fact that we have a Young Bucks Jurassic Express uh, storyline going on right now. Yeah. Because I've... Since the first time I saw Luchasaurus, <laughs> I was like, this guy has a character. This is a character. And then he's like, well, yeah, I'm also super smart. I've got two... Uh, uh, two master's degrees <laughs> and it's just like okay you're a smart guy as well who basically just decided to put a dinosaur mask on okay <laughs> and you're tall and really athletic he still has the the same problem that i see in nearly every tall guy bad <laughs> knees yeah and i'm like oh i feel bad for every one of you big guys so it was definitely a good matchup yes Mutrosaurus did take a um a canadian destroyer which was awesome. The real star that came out of here was just Jungle Boy. How he kept kicking out of stuff. A super kick, he kicked out. The double super kick. Kicked out. Kicked out. He kicked out. Of, he just kept kicking out. And it was just a great story overall. Um, and it really <laughs> sets Jungle Boy up for... Because you know they... they no one was trying to pin him. He kicked out. <laughs> The, the the rumor was that AEW is not doing any major push major pushes of talent because they want people there for audience right. there to do them and this is a great way to start setting up so when they do pull the trigger on Jungle Boy and do that but there's push, already a building base for him it's it's already like we've seen it but now we're gonna really hammer him had an amazing match with MJF yep now he's kicking out of the Young Bucks yep so it's a great little thing there. Um, and now they're going to be doing a thing with FTR next week in a non-title matchup. Jurassic Express or the Young Bucks? Um, Jurassic Express. All right. Yeah, because they're going to give Young Bucks FTR free on TV. Totally free on TV. <laughs> this is not WWE. <laughs> and then we're going to see it one week later on pay-per-view. People are going to be like, I don't know why we're watching this again, but okay. <laughs> yeah. So then we had um, the battle, the 21-man battle Royale. Yes. Where um, Lance Usher want, is still fighting Eddie Kingston in the Battle Royale because Eddie Kingston was not eliminated, according to Eddie Kingston. Exactly. Um, you were thrown out of the t- off the ring. You landed on your butt. You eventually stood up, eliminating yourself. Nope. Nope. Wasn't eliminated. I Okay. So this gives Lance Archer a future AEW ch- uh, championship match. Which will be on the 14th of October's Dynamite. The anniversary show of Dynamite is what they're referring to. Nice. So. I want Eddie Kingston to interrupt that. It's possible. And have him just be like, no, I'm still, I'm not eliminated. You never eliminated me. And and then it forces a match between the two of them mm-hmm. f- so that... So Lance Archer can kill him? Yes. <laughs> so Lance Archer can actually win and then go after no. the AEW championship. No. Do some, if you're going to do something like that, do it beforehand, before the, the title shot. Oh, actually, yeah, you could totally have it between now and then. Yeah. You could, you can Kingston do the... just comes out in, like, hit and run method. Hit and run over and over again. Well, there's, like, two weeks, so. Okay. Uh, and hit. one of those weeks, Jake <laughs> takes a bump. <laughs> Can we have Jake take a bump? No. Is it Paul? No? Okay. No. Um, I do like how Jake during the match was, was showing Kingston the snake. The snake. Because Eddie it, it, Kingston was afraid of things. Like, get that away from me. Kicking the bag. Um, it's like, get that thing away from me. Um, but this was a good spot. It was a good thing for Lance Archer. And I was correct um, to be announced to not win it. I was not correct on who Shut was going to win it. <laughs> um... I, Come I, on, to be determined is usually a good bet. If this was WWE, it would always be to be determined. That's very true. Um, it is a common thing in wrestling, which is why I picked to be determined for the um, concealed ladder match at Double or Nothing, which I was correct about. Yeah, um, whatever. And it was the debut of Matt Seidel. Yes. Who debuts, which who immediately botched his finisher. Look, man. <laughs> As it, as Matt has just posted, he is banning all banana peels from ringside, 
and every place in AEW. Just they're not allowed at all. Uh, for, so what happened was because of the ninety degree weather and humidity. Yeah. Everyone was having problems. The in rope there. got a little slick. It was super slippery. He was. If you watch him in when he comes off and he slips, the fact that he's able to turn himself so he he, he lands safely and not yeah, get injured exactly shows the professional and on um, the person and not him on the other guy and hitting injuring him. Yeah. Um. Yes, it was a botch. It was from the slippery ropes. Yes, that's it's, what people are gonna remember of. It's not gonna ruin him overall. No, because like. As he's as he starts the jump, his right foot is already sliding, and you can tell that he's like, "All right, so I'm kind of committed." <laughs> yeah, you you can see that it was a slip. Yeah, like he didn't like it wasn't like he botched it. It, it was wasn't a slip. It wasn't Brock Lesnar. Okay, no, it was a sl- he yeah. slipped off that when he came and he tried as hard as hard as he possibly could to land on his butt. Yeah, his body was already rotating when he tucked himself back in, so he landed no, he, on his no, back. He didn't rotate at all. He, like, he was going, he was going, and he's like, so he just like well, his, he, his he, legs kicked out forward. Yeah, he was where going they're to, supposed to. Yeah, because he's going back more, but yeah. he he didn't flip. He just so he just he twisted himself so he landed sideways on the back. His I back. like how you're really trying to show how this works, except for the fact <laughs> that there's no Lies. one watching me. Shut up. There's not only microphones in this office, there are cameras no, everywhere. No, there are not. What do you call that? That is the smoke detector. I'm pretty sure it's something that goes over the wires. <laughs> <laughs> the smoke detector. <laughs> but, Shit. but yes, it, anyway. was a, it was a good... Um, he saved it. It was a good thing overall. It was a good spot there. I'm actually happy with Lance Archer. Thinking back to this, I probably should have picked Lance Archer. I know like, he was probably my third. If I we did three picks, I probably would have picked him for sure. Yep. Um, he was he, my number two. He was your number two. Um, when I was doing this, when I was watching this, I was like, "Yeah, we we got, I got, we both got that right." And then I got to start filling this out. I'm like, "Oh nope, I got that wrong. Fuck! How did I get this one wrong? I should have known better. I really should have." Um, so, but it was a good. I'm happy with this. Mainly because we're going to get Moxie Archer again. Yes. And if you don't know why I'm happy about that, go watch their um, last man standing match at, New- at King- Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. This past year. Because it was a brutal matchup. Mm. We may even get a no rule, or a no disqualification matchup. Um, I doubt no, it. I really doubt it for the AEW Championship. But it w- it's it, still going to be a good matchup. Especially if it's the first time. Yeah, it's still going to be a good matchup. If the plan of Eddie Kingston in- interrupting... And then they're like, all right, Wednesday night we're putting the match on. You know, Tony's just like, no, it's happening. Well, we already know it's happening on Wednesday night. Well, yeah, but it's like, all right, next week it's happening. No. And then, you know, Eddie Eddie comes out again. Finally, Tony's just like, fine, no rules. Eddie, you want to come out there? Cool. Lance, you can beat him up in there. John, you can beat him up when he comes out there. And both of them just like... Eddie starts to come out. They just both stop beating each other up and look back at him. And he's like, "You know what? I'm good. <laughs> I'm, good. I'm good." Backs up and walks, like leaves. Yes. Goes goes over to commentary instead. <laughs> yes. So okay. So our next matchup. Ooh. This was it. it yeah. Nine minutes. And that and was oof. Yeah. So this was the Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara in a broken rules match. <laughs> It's a last man standing match. Yes. Um, Which went all over the place again. All over the place. It went... Into the back. back, Into the back. Into the ring. Up to the Raptors. No. No. It did not. Uh, Really, Uh, it was just kind of the back. And out to the field a little bit. So, this was the whole whole Matt Hardy um, hitting the back of his head. He Um, did not get a concussion. Um, It... Yeah, let's just put it this way. It was a stupid move to regain to restart the match. Um, here, honestly, here, I know I know the whole uh, thing. You wanted to put the win on Matt Hardy. Yes. Here's the thing. You could still have the ref call the match there. Call the match there. You give the win to Sammy regardless. He, mm. Matt couldn't could continue. You draw. It's no. a draw. It's a no. It's a called draw. No, because here's the thing. What it does because it was maybe it goes against the plan. It makes Sammy better. Gives him a major win. And then when Matt is better, you could revisit this. No, because if Matt loses, he's out. Nope. Then he's out. 
Matt Hardy, if Matt Hardy loses, he would have to leave AEW. So instead, so. you call it a draw. Nope. That way, he leaves AEW. No. And then you have Mr. No. Hardy show up. No. <laughs> because it's supposed to be all versions of Matt are not allowed at all. So instead, what you do is you have it called a draw. Mr. Nero, then. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you have it called a draw. Sammy continues to call it a win as a heel while Matt's out healing. No, it, go with the there. You can work around him. He has to leave AEW. You, it always does happen. No, you have him come back as as Mr. America. <laughs> Mr. Uh, AEW, Mr. Mean, Elite. You mean Mr. Um, like Mr. Wrestle Talk? Oh, yes, that too. Uh, <laughs> no, I have Mr. Elite. Whose also nickname is Mr. E. <laughs> oh, God. And he comes out in a gold and black mask, which barely covers his hair. <laughs> and Sammy believes it's Mr. E. And yes. not, um. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. It, it's, it's, it's worse at trying to cover up who Matt Hardy is than Mr. America was. <laughs> I know. Okay? Um. So. After that matchup, we had Hikaru Shida taking on, uh, defending the AEW World Women's Championship. Women's World <laughs> Championship. AEW if World you're gonna read, if you're gonna read it, read it right. AEW World Women's Championship. God, taking on no. NWA World Women's Championship, which I, it, by the way, yeah, that is correct. By the way, yeah, it is. So that's and that's how it should be. But that's not how it I is. I don't care. I'm saying it how I want to say it and how it should be. They AEW sets the rules on this. No, they don't. We don't. I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Anyway. Anyway, um, this was a match that went up 16 minutes and 57 seconds, which was a great timing for a women's matchup. So, um, that is way more than WWE has given. For the most, most of the time. Yeah. Um, it was a great matchup. Thunder Rosa looked amazing in this matchup. I mean, she always looks amazing, bro. Oh, oh, skill wise. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. Wow. Totally. 2020, bro. 2020. She's a beautiful woman. Okay. 2020, bro. I mean, she's not. That. She's not Big Swole. Who's <laughs> Big Swole's my girl. Wow. Uh, you I might... have a new crush. I mean, Alexa Bliss is still one of my crushes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a feeling um, Cedric Alexander is going to have a problem with that. I have no problem being look. I, <laughs> look, I'm, I'm Polly. I I have no. I if she wants to come over and say hi to me too, you know Cedric. That's cool. You can watch if you want. Oh God! I dude. mean, what? Wow. What? Okay, back on topic. Uh, who but, said that? Who yeah, said that? This was a great matchup. It was unfortunately the crowd was taken out of it in the early part of it because well, of what I happened mean, with Matt after- Hardy. Watching Matt Hardy smack the back of his head off from concrete, and then continue the match, going to rush. Which the was hit, his decision after he was cleared by doctors, who immediately gave. I mean, the cool <clears throat> thing about having being at Jacksonville and being AEW being owned by the Con family, who also own the Jaguars, they can literally go, "Hey, our team doctors who normally respond to this stuff, hey, can we have you check out? You know." for wrestling and they're like same level of impact and they're like yep same protocols for uh, concussion yep so if they pass them they can get back in see that's but that that was the mistake i no it was a bad call on the company's matt as his wife said reba uh, um who said matt hardy was the look, biggest idiot i <laughs> in the building there are times where I like Reba, and there are times where, much like Kanye, she should not be on Twitter. Okay, yes. just not at all. The woman when he's when she's watching her husband in a match, she should not be anywhere near Twitter. Yeah, just not at all. Yes, it, it's uh, it's one of those things where she likes to vent on Twitter. Um, vent? <laughs> what? No. But I mean, I I agree with her on this. Everything she said. It, it Matt was an idiot for it. Okay? Matt was an idiot. The company was stupid. Now, one thing, um, the, the company the, on Wrestle Talk's podcast today, because we're recording on a Friday instead of a Thursday. Yeah. Because wow. someone felt like they didn't feel like recording on yesterday. I felt like shit yesterday, okay? 
I was you run were, the fuck down. You worked through it, bro. I was tired. You worked through it, brother. Oh, don't you brother me, brother. How I'm dare co- how dare you brother me, bro? <laughs> We're coming after you, Hogan. <laughs> We're gonna turn brother into a bad thing on this channel. <laughs> anyway, um they part out like Owen one Hart will I- show up and tell us no. No. No, we're not going there. I got one in no. there. I got one in. No. One per episode. No. You're way off your, your quota then. <laughs> That's my one per episode. You're, you've missed a bunch of them. No, I've sli- I've gotten a sneaky one in almost every week. No, you haven't. You've missed a bunch of episodes. You didn't Well, early in. on. Oh, even after that, you, you start doing you, There are a bunch of episodes. Anyway, they brought up it, about it on their Wrestle Talk. It's like the podcast was that the idea was... The one thing that they haven't done was apologize for doing it. And they should. Yeah. Because it was, regardless if he passive procedurals. Yeah, they should just be like, 2020, you should have known better. I didn't know. Um, you could just set, like they said, you could just called it a, a draw. Yeah. Not even a draw, just call the match off. Both people were, like, were injured. Not even a draw, just a no contest. And when Matt got healed, you had the blow off. Well, plus it allows Sammy to then uh, play up being the heel. Yes. And like he could be like, no, it's not a draw. He can't compete. I win. He can't compete. You know, and then get mad at the the ref. And then the ref can easily go, all right, fine. Like, you know, ref gets, you know, pushed. And you're like, all right, fine. You get you this now. Matt Hardy is now the winner of this match. And what? No, um. <laughs> Well, you know, not even a, a draw. You call it a no contest. Yeah, a no contest. Because I mean, that's what I meant by draw. But when you say draw, I mean, it's, it's a little bit something different. But you call it a no contest, no winner or loser. The match is straight up just. But it didn't it happen. It stops. It stops. There's no actual. Basically, the match didn't happen. Yep. Um, and then you could have Sammy, and you do the blow off when he came back. Yeah, that's something they should have done. But going back to this one, it was a great matchup. Thunder Rosa looked awesome. I'm glad she's sticking around. She's defending the AW World Women's Championship the against Eva Lise. NWA Championship? I said that. You said the AEW. I one. said NWA. You said AEW. Prove me wrong. Owen Hart, if you could go ahead and really, bro? play it back. <laughs> really? <laughs> Trying to make up for all the ones you missed now? What? <laughs> no. As long as you don't, you don't do the other guy. <laughs> You're like, you're what, a, what do you mean? I already slipped it in here with a Canadian destroyer. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, that's usually my, my, that's, that's Owen Hart. No, the Canadian, you mean the Canadian crippler? Yeah, no, I like to go with the destroyer. No. <laughs> anyway, it was a good mention. I'm glad she's looking around. Uh, it gives, elevates her. And I do like the package they put together for this matchup. The whole concept behind this I'm thing. I'm glad that you said it that way instead of being like, and I really liked her package. Yeah. Really? It's 2020, bro. Dude, <laughs> I didn't say it that way. <laughs> yes. I, I broke you for a second. All right. Now, anyway, <laughs> the, the whole hype package was, because the whole mind frame behind this was a prize fight. Yes. That was what they were kind of going for. And they got Billy Corgan, the owner of NWA, to sign off on it. Because when he was approached, that's how he was approached. A prize fight. Champion versus champion. He loved it. Mostly because it's going to give his really unwell-known NWA promotion that's still around more hype. So when he brings it back next year, yep. Um, when Thunder Rosa goes back there, it'll be bringing more eyes to it, which is great. Change up the goddamn 70s look, though, please. And we'll probably get an announcement of a working relationship relationship between NWA and AEW. Yes. So I think it'd be it's a great thing. Um, that because you have two you have two star major stars now. Yeah. Um, where even after like when she, you had um, mm. Nyla Rose. Okay. She even, she kind of lost her thunder. Um, yeah, yeah. And they're trying to build that back up with Vicky Guerrero um, a little bit. I, I do like her work with Vicky. Yes. I uh, really wish it had been uh, Awesome Kong. Yes, same here. But Vicky works. But The, the Karen of all Karens. <laughs> yes, she is. So I, I She's do like such that. a Karen that she's a Vicky. But she hasn't been on major TV for a little while. Yeah. It just lost her thunder. Um, and we're kind of getting another car she to 
You know what? You know Rose where, I've, match. But you know anyway. where I've, I've heard that she can get her thunder back? <laughs> in the dome. Oh, God. But. Guess who told me that one? Your brain. No. Who? Sup, Owen? <laughs> I'm, hey, producer, I'm the one editing this week, right? I can nope. cut those out. No, you're not. God damn it. All right. All right, we're moving on to the eight-man tag okay. team match. Which we both got wrong, by the way. Yes, we did. Um, we picked the Dark Order here. But I, I do like the fact that, as much as I didn't agree with this decision, especially after um, Brody Lee's destru- destruction of Cody Rhodes yeah. um, to win the TNT Championship, I do like the fact that, um, as always, Brody Lee set up Colt Cabana to win with a discus clothesline, and Colt decided to go one more, fucked up, Yep. and Dustin rolled him up. And then you just see Brody flip the fuck out on um, Colt, and it was Mr. Um, Evil. <laughs> <laughs> Evil Uno? Mr. Evil Uno? Mr. Uno. Oh, <laughs> Evil you. Uno, who stayed in and kind of ushered him back. Like, I understand. I know what it's like to be you know, fight. I do like the d- dynamic that he's kind of the the fixer of the group. He's just like, look, um, Mr. Lee, uh, you know. <laughs> I will say this. I like Evil Uno's character far more now than what they did when they brought him in. Yes. Because it, what they did when he brought him in, it would just he, they were too un- unknown uh, also, for, for people. I have to ask. Has he lost weight? He's lost a lot of weight. Okay, I'm I'm not the only one. Like, I keep seeing it. I'm like, I swear to God, he's lost a lot of weight. Yeah. Or, or he's just dressing in a way that it doesn't look no, like he's... he's lost a lot of weight. Okay. And I think right. you go look back at some of his indie stuff. He's about the same size he was on the indies. Like, well, at one okay. point. Um, because when he came in, he was a lot heavier. Yeah, he was. Um, which I was really impressed with. With um few things i've seen of him but then i saw the full-on tag match and then i saw their finisher oh yeah uh, he is definitely back down to because so uh wikipedia if you click on uh evil uno and yeah. Stu grace and it brings you to their original play original tag team name the super smash brothers yeah and yeah he's yeah he's not that i do like the shirt of uno 316 and good job guys so yeah no he's definitely in better shape which is great uh, good for him, but so I do kind of like this. Um, I again I don't agree with the finish overall because of what you do um, with Brody Lee and Cody. If you change the squash um, to a semi a kind of a squash match, it, I would have been fine with it right. because right. you bit, he destroyed Cody. Yeah, and, and he, then you get this. He, it just he destroyed Dustin, but it, but. Colt decided he needed to go further with it, yeah. and it backfired. Which is the, the saving grace. Which means that Brody Lee is in charge of a group of people who can't get it done. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like he just and the fact that they can't hot um, sign any major talent. <laughs> Honestly, that that's not on that, that's that's not on John Silver. That that's. What? Ow! What? Why are you throwing papers at me? I'm still not selling for you. Uh, that's not John Silver's fault. Really, it's Alex Reynolds. It's all of his fault. Yeah, um, it was... It, but overall, I mean, like I said, the finish with Colt, that was the saving grace for mm-hmm. me. I still, again, don't agree with the finish of the Dark Order losing, but I will say they did a good way in protection, but I just think it would have been better for the Dark Order to have the win here. You know... But, again, it, it had a saving grace. It did get allow for Dustin to get a TNT Championship shot on Dynamite this past week. Good. Which Dustin attacked Brody Lee beforehand, so they had back and forth. Because I know a lot of people um, condemning, not condemning, but criticizing the match because Dustin got so much in after Brody Lee crushed Cody. Uh, but Dustin attacked beforehand, right. so it may, in wrestling logic, regardless of where you are, not just WWE, regardless, you get attacked before 50% power max. Exactly. You are knocked down. Unless you get poisoned the week before, then you're back at 100, even though everyone will say that you're nowhere near 100%. Exactly. Okay. Um, wrestling logic, no, bro. No, 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 no. That's just WWE. Oh, okay. You're confusing WWE logic with wrestling logic. Sorry. 
I know it's six so F. I know it can be. I know it can be a little confusion, confusing, because sometimes WWE logic is wrestling logic, but it, most of the time WWE logic is not wrestling logic. Yeah, yeah. I blame it on six F. What? Five G. There you go. Okay. All right. So moving on to <laughs> the match of the night. Actually, my bad. The second match of the night. Yes. Um. Because the match of the night is coming up. Yes, it is. It, it, it's going to happen. <laughs> so we had FTR successfully winning the AEW World Tag Team Championships from Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega. And this is where Adam... And the heel turn didn't happen. It got really, really close. Adam, um, this is where I'm just going to say, you may have gotten more win matches correct, predicted corrected, but I uh, declare victory here. Because you got this match wrong, I got it right. You had them just retaining the tag titles, I got it right. Yeah, that's all that matters. I'm the winner. I may not be the champion, but I'm the winner. <laughs> all right, comes the um, storyline. But this was a almost 20 seconds shy of 30 minutes. Yeah, um, I do like the uh, well, the post match where. Kenny clearly. Get, we'll get to that in a second. Oh, all I, right. Let's, let's, let's but that's the that. better stuff that happened. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's better than the finish, the match. But oh, okay. All right. All right. No, this was a great match because the storyline, the story here is comes down to this: who's better, two single guys in a tag team or a ta- actual or tag, a tag, tag team. team? And the the story is in wrestling. It's always the, the tag the, team. It, no. It's always the tag team. Oh wait, sorry, I was mixing it up with WWE logic. Exactly. Okay. In the WWE, it's always the tag team that just got thrown together. And who are generally in the world title pitcher. Yeah, and single stars. Because the um we all know world title pitcher guys are better than tag team talent. Who are only doing tag team wrestling. Yeah, yeah of who course. are experts in tag team wrestling lose to two single stars. Two, two guys who never tag yeah. like outside of occasionally. Uh, yeah, it's just one now, of those things. But this now, I a- do have to say, though, Kenny does have a one-up because there's so much tag team wrestling in uh, New Japan and the, the style that he is so used to. He is very versed in tag team yes. wrestling. It's, which is why it's still it's a good matchup. But even when you have someone who's as diverse in tag team wrestling, who's a single star, two who only tag team... Yeah. The, the the tag team with uh, with uh char- not charisma um, experience experience um, um, they should always be better I mean at the same time though having the the match against the young bucks mm-hmm. that purely came down to okay who's going to not be able to stop kicking out first yeah, yeah. that was a different story yeah um and that you could kind of hint that it was a little bit of the same thing. But it just kind of showed because Hangman does also have a lot of tag experience. Yes, he does. And you could just say that in that mo- in that that night, two tag team wrest- two single stars as a tag team, were just happened to be barely a- enough to defeat. Yes. Um, the Young Bucks because and, the Young Bucks got too emotional. Yeah, and here they were just barely not enough. No. Yep. To beat FTR. Um, with everything that was going on. Yeah. There. And I do think this was a great back and forth story of how they worked over Kenny's knee. Yep. Um, and really worked it over. And, like, it showed later on when he was trying to do things and he couldn't do them. Well, until you get to much later on in the show. And then there's nothing wrong with his knee as he walks out to his vehicle. But, you know, that that's neither here nor there. Adrenaline, bro. Yeah, yeah. Adrenaline. Um, but no. I, he had it iced down. <laughs> but, no, it was a good. Cortisone shot. <laughs> that's what it is. Yes. And it, was, it was a good matchup. I do not like the finish overall. I do like the fact that Kenny barely couldn't get it out there, get out there to stop the pin. I don't like the spike pile driver as a finisher, as a finish. Now I like the fact that they hit it once and Hangman kicked out, but the fact that he went right back into it. Why aren't you doing the fucking Shatter Machine or the Goodnight Express is what they call it now? I don't know. Um, that's how you that, should have. That's fin- not. That's not a question I can answer. You're supposed to know this. I know. You're, they're I don't your best to. friends. You're supposed to know this. No, best friends are my best friends. No, they're not. They're my best friends. They can't. You can't be their best friend. Too. Why can't we all be best friends? Because I hate you. Do you? Yes. Do you? Yes. Let me ask my friend Owen about that. <laughs> I, I could also ask Chris. Oh, 
God. No. Chris, Chris isn't really good at responding. He chokes a lot. God, that is horrible. God. I am going to hell. No, you were going to hell. I'll, I'll probably run into Chris there. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be hanging out. Dude, ah, enough. Ah, enough, bro. Yes. Oh, those were so great. If we were monetized, we would just lose our monetization. No, we wouldn't. <laughs> if YouTube knew what, what you were actually reading. Exactly. <laughs> we would. Maybe. <laughs> but no, it was uh, it was there. I mean, I did like it. It was a good matchup. It was the right decision. Ow, sorry. The right time for them to um, drop the belts. A good uh, yes. team to drop the belts, too. Um, and as the FTR said in their, their tweet, I was 119 in the ring, and they went 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And by the way, the finish came and with... And it's Florida heat. Yeah. So there's a level of humidity, which no one can understand <laughs> unless you are from that region. Which I just came from, so yes, I understand it. And I used to live in Alabama. I understand it. So the, the whole thing is the finish came down to they went for the buckshot lariat. Um, missed. They couldn't get it, so they um, Penny held him for the buckshot lariat, on uh, the V trigger, the V trigger buckshot combo. What is yeah, it? that that combo that they do. Um, yeah, they were going for they couldn't, but they had him to go for the buckshot lariat. Um, ducked. Um, ducked it. Then turned around. Hangman held him for the V trigger. Uh, got out of the way. Nailed. Um. Hangman with the V trigger, knocking him out. I love Kenny well. trying to wake him up. Yep. And just like, no. They throw him out, hit the uh, spike power driver, kick out, hit the spike power again. Kenny can't, trying to get in. They stop him. One, two, three. It was not the finish I was hoping for. I think it was a little more action pa- a little bit more faster pace. But it was mm-hmm. still up to the spike power driver because I do not like the spike power driver. <laughs> okay. Finisher. I'm sorry. I just don't. Um, but then we got to the post match. Yes. And like we were saying last week, it needs to be a reflection of um, Revolution. Yes. Where Hangman teased a turn, but this was Kenny, like he was going to hit him with that t- and that trip. Threw it down, he's like, I'm done. And walking out. Also, Paige collapses yeah he comes so in like there it's and completely he... useless to try to hit him then yeah. it's just like and i i love well, he'd always thrown the trait the thing down by oh, that okay. um but then he comes in and he's just like he moves out of the way and he just collapses yeah um and just kenny just like kicks the done. beers i'm done um yeah because fdr left a beer in there for him yeah kicks it i love the fact that the cameraman is right yeah. there it comes right over the yeah. camera i was like yeah. that was that's that that's something that you can't truly plan. All you can yeah. go is Kenny's like, I will try to kick it in that direction. Yeah. And hopefully I don't hit you, cameraman. Yeah. So it was a great little thing spot there, but he's just saying, I'm done. He leaves. He went out the heel entrance. Yep. Um Does this mean we're getting the cleaner finally? Uh the fact that he said I th- We need a clean sweep. Yeah, uh, no, not a clean sleep. Sweep. We need a clean start. Yes, clean start. Yes. <laughs> um, clean sweep means something completely different. <laughs> also, the fact that immediately he was like, so Young Bucks, you're coming with me, right? Yeah. You're coming with me. And like, it reminded me a lot of when when he first was the cleaner. And it, was, it wasn't necessarily like he was trying to recruit the Bucks, but it was always like he was acting like he was trying to recruit the Bucks, even though they were all in Bullet Club together. Yeah. It was like he was just trying to get them onto whatever crazy page. plan he was planning next. The same page, basically. Yeah. So it was a good spot right there. It was awesome. Gave us that um, a title change because it set up the, how good the tag, tag titles are. Now. Yeah. You have to be... Um, so that, uh, and so, they, thanks to Dynamite, we do know that Hangman Page would love to go with Kenny to try to go for the tag titles one more time. Yeah, Kenny said basically, "Fuck you, Hangman Page." He's like, "No, I'm, I'm going, going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna concentrate on I'm being a single, single star, star for again. right now. I have some plans in the works." Um, and if uh, my plans and his plans are the same, we're good. Um, and by his plan, I mean AEW's plans would be good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and then we had the match of the night. 
Orange Cassidy taking on Chris Jericho in the Mimosa Mayhem matchup. I am so glad that you're also calling this match <laughs> of the night. For me, it's the fact that it's the Mayhem... Uh, Mimosa, sorry, the Mimosa, Mimosa Mayhem, Mayhem match. Now, I, I'm i saying this like kind of as a joke in a sense, but at the same time, it's it's a match of the night in its own category in a way. I mean, any honestly, any time that Orange Cassidy has a match match... Yeah. I'm I'm just I'm super. Well, see the thing is, amazing. Like I love his his Superman punch. Yeah, oh yeah, on um, the juice punch. I think is what he calls yeah. it. Yeah, but the whole thing. Like, here's what um, I thought was great about this matchup because it started out like him about to go to do the hands thing in the corner and he runs, but Jericho's ready for him. Hits a code breaker, almost gets a three count right there. Yeah, because you can win by pinfall submission or being totally Holy submerged. Merged. Totally so much. and they into an opponent's opponents. vat of a mimosa. Oh, I didn't know that it had to be an opponent's vat of a mimosa. I, I really be, I, think it was just a uh, uh, mat a uh, vat. I think so too. But I, now I think about it, I'm pretty. Sure, nah, I, they didn't say which one was whose. Was I whose. know. So I don't think it really mattered. Um, but then Orange got his hair um, soaked a little bit from putting early on. But it was a great back and forth, great spots of, oh, they go in. Oh, they're teasing pinfalls, it. Oh, they're teasing it. Potential pinfalls. And then having Jericho on the top and then the Superman punch. Superman punch. And he just... I, you can tell that Jericho was having fun at that moment because he jumps back to it and he just... He, he spreads out so he can get the biggest possible splash. Yep. But he tucks his head because he's like... Uh, there, there's an edge behind yeah, me. Just, I I got, and he almost hit that. He yeah, came he did. really close. He, if he did. didn't tuck his head. He would have smacked the back of his I'm head. I'm pretty sure they ran through this um to see um how it just by how he'd fall, how far he would go back. Yeah. So he's like, just make sure you basically you're taking a bump. Just make sure you take take tuck your head. Yeah. Um, because he didn't jump. He fell. Like when he hit, he he. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was having. He made sure his arms were up to get the biggest splash possible. Did, um, so on BTE afterwards, that splash <laughs> went way back. That's not a surprise at like, all. Like, there was standing mimosa, <laughs> like, on the floor, pre- like, a good 10 feet back. Not surprised at all. Not surprised like, at all. That's awesome. Because the way he came, he came down that rope, um, physics dictate all the to, uh, splash. Hardly any splash landed in the ring. Land in the ring or on Jericho until he went under. Yep. It, it's going away. The way he you fall, it's going out. Yep. Um, and they did that on purpose, which was great. Yeah. Um, so it was a good little spot. And yes, little, the joke is this is the match of the night um, where FTR and Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega was yeah. the match of the night, but this yeah. was its own match of the night. Uh, yeah. This is. I mean, also Jericho, I. I did see somebody at one point was like, why is Jericho putting over this loser Orange Cassidy? And I was like, okay, hold on a second. Hold up, hold up. First of all, OC OC is not a loser. Actually a really good wrestler. Mm -hmm. Respect it. Uh, Second, this isn't the Jericho from 20 uh, 20 years ago. No. No. This is is a 50-year-old Jericho. He's lost a step. He doesn't do the things he used to do. There's no, there's no lion salts. Nope. He doesn't hit those. Uh, he does every so often, but nowhere like he used to. No, like it, it used to. It was at least one a match. Yeah, and now he breaks it out if he needs to. Yeah. Um, also because I'm sure it's probably harder to do each exactly time in his age. But also, this is like, he's fifty. I he doesn't have, have to, to do, do it. it. Well, like, I don't want to do it. Or he's like. It, I, I'm playing to my age. Yeah. Um, also, the fans want to see it, and I don't. I want to deny them. Now I want to see a 50 plus match of of Chris Jericho versus uh, Christopher Daniels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but no, and this, it needs to be 50 seconds long, so it's 50 for 50 plus. So here's the other thing, like, um, you know, Jericho's putting over a young talent. Exactly. Something that no one else is doing in WWE. What? Uh, putting over, over younger, younger talent? Well, the, their loss to the bigger talent gets the most... Yes! In AEW, you losing to a bigger talent will can get you over. In the other first wrestling, time. In, the, in wrestling in general, that can happen. 
but that's how WWE does it. When no. You lose to an older talent or a legend, you get squashed, basically. Oh, well, it's not just a squash. You never win again for yeah. quite some time. You, the way it should work is that the first time you have a series of matches with this person, this legend, the first time the legend beats you. Yeah. The second time you have a much closer match and it becomes more of a 50 50 chance about winning. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, you lose. It depends on how the crowd's been reacting to you. The third one, if the crowd is hot on you at that point, okay. that legend will lose or yeah. should lose. Yeah. Uh, but it's WWE. They'll bring the Undertaker in and have four squash matches in a yeah. row. Speaking of squash matches, yes, Orange Cassidy had a squ- basically a squash match on Dynamite. I'm sorry. What? Yeah, they actually had. Did he get squashed? No, he squashed someone. I'm sorry. What? So it's basically this idea that this new confidence that Orange Cassidy, you could say, has now after his program with Jericho, where he actually he's is going trying? to trying from the start. I... What? Character development? <gasps> Hold on here. I know. But yes, <laughs> this was a good matchup. Then we move on to AEW World Champion John. I mean, hold on. I'm I'm doing it wrong. Yes. I, I gotta do this right. John. No. Nope. Moxley. You, you 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 did it wrong. It's really? John. Moxley. No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but you got it. It's the John. John Moxley. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> I am so sorry. All you guys with headphones on. Yeah. Suck it. <laughs> they couldn't hear you. <laughs> they can't hear the show. <laughs> They've but. tuned out at about an hour. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> no problem. Thanks, Tim. No problem. Uh, this is what you get for not paying me. I want those paychecks, by the way. Anyway, defeating MJF in a matchup where the paradigm shift was banned. Not just banned, if John Moxley used it, it was a disqualification, yes. and he lost the championship. Right. So he beat, and he said when he signed the contract, this means he's going to have to get creative. And how creative did he get? Well, he decided to cheat before um, MJF could, behind yeah. the rest back, and he had the paradigm shift. <laughs> yep. And, and that was because MJF had Wardlow distract the, the ref. And throw the ring in, which he botched, which was on purpose, obviously. Yes. Struggled to the ring. Moxie saw he was about to cheat, so he decided to cheat. All right, instead. fine. On um, the paradigm shift, and then retain. It was the right move. Moxie should. Because, again, people can say, oh, you should pull the trigger on MJF. No, you shouldn't. He's not, not ready. He's only been wrestling for four years. I mean, there's yes, nowhere else for him to go. He's after hot he drops for it, it. but so, but it gets people thinking he's at that caliber when he's not there yet. I have it. Eventually, over the next year, he and Wardlow team up and go for the the tag team title. No, Wardlow turns on him. Well, they because did tease that. Th- that is teased. Uh, the fact that John Silver and Alex Reynolds hit on him. Uh, while trying to recruit him. Oh, there's a whole lot of men meet there. Mm. Yeah. That's that's what it was I the know. entire time. It's oh, it's great. It, like, I I get it. Okay. John Silver is very quickly becoming like my absolute favorite in this company right now. Partly because he he just he's. BTE sells it for me. He <laughs> is like 100% all about just like, how can we make people smile? Yeah. I, I'm having fun. I want to make I'm, everyone smile. I'm getting paid really well. <laughs> I'm getting paid really well to not be good at my job, yeah. which I'm good at. It's, it's, it's the, uh, what's that? Um, the Arby's money? Uh, Chili's money. Chili's money. The my Chili's bad. money, man. Um, that he's getting paid now. I mean, he was... Wasn't getting paid that much beforehand. No. Um, for being an underrated talent that the the low rated talent that he is. Exactly. But now that he's making big bucks, he just wants to have fun. Exactly. <laughs> but no, it was just a great spot. It was a great thing there. It was just a show Moxie like, Oh, I'm a baby face. I can cheat too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like or, I love the fact that Moxley is just like, Yeah, so um I know that the rules are is that I'm never supposed to cheat. It's like, uh, 
No. No. I, I want to win. I want to win. That's all. Oh, I'm... he's going to cheat and try to cheat Who, me Really? Out? Okay. No. <laughs> Paradigm shift. Yeah. And see, I would love to let him do it. And like, and the record is qualifying. He stops the ref. He's like, like, no. No. That's the death Par- rider. That's the death rider. Paradigm shift is the <laughs> pick up MJF and go like, no. like <laughs> you pick up MJF and hit him with a paradigm shift like, which doesn't lift his feet up. And he's no, like, he, see that that's no, the paradigm shift. No, he goes like he goes for the um he hits the death rider and he's like like no like he goes like, no 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 because the rest of like you pause and the match is on pause which is not official part of the, yes <laughs> goes he picks up. him up this is the paradigm shift and he hits the paradigm shift on him like see there's a difference and the ref is like. I do okay, see the I, difference. I, see I will yeah. allow it. I will allow it. And he rolls him over. Restart the match. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and hits the, par- the Death Rider again. <laughs> and pulls him over. Oh, no. It doesn't even hit him. Just rolls Pulls him over. over and pins him. Yeah. One, two, <laughs> three. <laughs> All right. Well, I won. Wardlow's like, <laughs> what? You. <laughs> what? <laughs> but there's. The- I. Uh. Come here, Max. Let's but, yes. take you to the back. Uh, by, by the way, um, MGF. And his blood spot. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a spot where like, you could see Moxley hitting it, him on the top of his head, where it was in the hairline. Yep. Um, but I'm like, he's trying to make him bleed some more for the finish. And like, and that's not, that's not, he had like a headlock on him. He started to start being like, there it goes. Because he wanted, that's why he was doing it. Yep. Um, good for MJF for doing a blood. Uh, a, a hard abuse, way. A hard way. I don't necessarily think it was a hard way. I think he was, he bladed. Oh, uh, you know, um, because I think it's not. You don't actually see the, how big the wound was. You just knew where what where it was. All right. Um, but like, I think he just because just when gave he, him the but, little but nick. By the time he came back and how much blood he had on him, um, he didn't get hit that hard. It didn't look like it was a hard way. It could have been a hard way, but to me, it came off more of a blade. I don't know. I'm not gonna pass judgment. Just my opinion. Yeah. Um, it like I said, it could have been the hard way. Either way. But it was a good spot here. It elevates MJF. That he needs to end up by double or nothing. He needs to be TNT champion. I I like the idea of tag. No, I don't want him in the tag division. No, yet. no, because that weakens the tag. TNT division, having him move up in it, not necessarily beat Brody Lee. No, that doesn't have to beat Bro- Brody Lee. Beat the person who beats Brody Lee. Yes. Um, now, here's the thing. I and then lo- Brody Lee destroys him. See, here's what I would love to see. And recruits Wardlow. <laughs> See what I'd love to see happen is, um, it's a uh, Hangman who beats MJF for the title. Yes. And then it's MJF who beats Hangman for the AEW World Championship. Okay. After Hangman beat Kenny Omega at next year's All Out. Okay. Or you know, got it. I got you. Or double or nothing. Nope. Not double or nothing. All Out. It's or, done. Or double or nothing. Nope. But this was. Or Fighter Fest. No. Or a random Wednesday night. <laughs> Exactly. Super Tuesday three. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Isn't it NXT? <laughs> the debate, the, the debut of Saturday Night um, Feature Contest because you can't do main event because yeah, featured uh, contest. <laughs> featured contest. Do you remember? He's gonna win it on Slam and Saturday. Do you remember when um a, um in um Impact for TNA they called their main event the feature contest? Yeah, I actually liked that. I had no problem with it, but it was just like it, everyone knows that. It's the main event. Yeah. In like every to... one of these fighting sports, it's the main event. Mm, it's the main event, but you, they all, it, for MMA, it's, it's, yes, it's the main event. It's also the feature contest because it's a, the featured fight. Uh, you know, I like that. Whatever um, I, 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 things. I, I like it. Um, so, but no, it was a good thing. It was just a good spot overall. Um, Adam... Uh, I'd ask you what you'd give this card, but since you haven't watched it, you can't. I give it a 10. Not allowed. Why not? Because you haven't seen it. Out of 100. (laughs) This is not a WWE show. (laughs) Out of 11. It's not a WWE show. You you don't get to grade it. I would give this card, um, this match, this show, out of... I'm going to go out of 10 here. um, An 8. I give it one Infinity Gauntlet snap. No, you can't give it a grade. You can't do anything. Yes, you I can. Until you, until you I watch can do it. things. No, you can't. I'm allowed to do things. No, you're not. Um, but I give it um, an eight out of a ten. The Matt, I would probably would have given it a nine if the Matt Hardy spot didn't happen. Okay. All right. Um, but it was a good show. Uh, 
But yeah, we have some yeah. stuff we got to cover. In, yeah, in especially about, 15 minutes. In 15 minutes. That's nothing. So. We've got to do more stuff in less time before. <laughs> we have. All right. I, I'm just. I'm now going to just jump right into it. Okay. So on Wednesday night, following up this, we have uh, the announcement that Tay Conti uh, is officially, officially signed, signed with uh, AEW. Which she is, good, is all elite. Good for her. I, yep. She's. Boy, are they going to regret letting her go. Yeah. They are going and, to regret. And honestly, I kind of, I would like for her to continue working with Anna Jay. Yes. Uh, and the Dark Order. Yes, because um, Mr. Roy Lee only wants blonde women in the Dark Order. Thank you. No, see, here's what I want to see. I, here's what I want to see. A little before. meta joke there. Here's what I want to see. I want them to recruit someone who's not a blonde. And that, the not a blonde, is the person who gets yelled at for the women. All the time. Even if for things that she had nothing she to do with. She was even there. Even better, she is John Silver's, like, on-screen best friend, girlfriend, if you will. No, you know what I'm thinking of that for, but just, like, she... But this, she keeps turning to, like, John and being like, really? And he's like, I know, I know, this happens yeah. all the time. She's, she's like, the John, she, she's the film, female version of John Silver. Yeah, the two of them just bounce off <laughs> from each other. Like, I'm what? Like, really? And I'm like, hey, I'm 29, and they still call me a kid. kid. Like, Shut 20. up, kid! <laughs> I'm 29. <laughs> you're not a kid until you're 30. <laughs> Jesus proved that. I am 30 now. <laughs> Shut up, kid. Today's my birthday. <laughs> I can't wait for that. Oh, I can't wait for that <laughs> one. That's going to be great. It's like, <laughs> guys, today's my birthday. <laughs> Are you crying? <laughs> it's my party. <laughs> but yes. Um, I can cry official. if I want to. So it's a great for that, for her. Yep. Um. There was an also new signee. Yeah, this one's even a bigger one. It is. Hey, hey, hey. It's, it's just, it's a big one, but it's just elite acknowledging elite. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's elite. It's all of the elite, elite. Acknowledging, acknowledging the best man. The, not just the best, a super athlete who's the best man. Yes. Miro. Yes, now, oh, I know a lot of people aren't happy with his debut. I think it's the perfect spot for him. Yes. Because I, you got to understand, I know people want, like, he's he deserves better. He should be right to the moon. And don't get me wrong, I think he'll get there. But here's the thing you got to remember. you got to take in from a, a standard wrestling fan who will recognize Rusev. Yes. Miro. And, like, remember where he was in, a, in WWE. You can't, he's not, while he deserves more... He was not in a main event spot. Even no. when, as much as they were pushing that stupid Lana thing. I know. Um, stuff. And yes, it was a featured angle, but it was not even considered main event. No. It was consi- It was for Bobby Lashley, but yes. not for Rusev. It was a step which is down weird. for Rusev, but a step up for Lashley, but it was which a, really did was, not help anyone which involved. Was, which really was a step down for everyone involved. Uh-huh. But that's how the WWE wanted to portray it. But anyway, so you got to take that in consideration. This is a good spot for him. Oh, yeah. It's a, Kip Sabian hasn't been featured, but I have a theory here. Yes. Jericho brought it up when he talked about when TV was going... Before TV launched last year for Dynamite, like when they came to TV, they have to... Unlike WWE when they bring up new talent, it was one or two at a time. Mm-hmm. They have to introduce basically their entire roster to the, to the audience because they're not known. Exactly. Outside of a few people. So you can't m- p- push everyone. Honestly, I think it works better than the WWE system of very slowly bringing people up. Because the downfall to that one is that you go, hey, this person is very special. And then a couple of weeks later, you're like, well, you said that they were special, but they've lost for five straight matches now. And you're like, well, they're still special. And you're like, no, you're burying them. While AEW is going, oh, no, see... Everyone is solid. We've got some people got some people that stand out more. Some people that you know stand out because of this other thing. That was John not, Silver. That's not where I was going with and how oh. they were pushing him. All right. My main thing is there are natural people who you're gonna yes you're gonna use on occasion here and there. Yeah. We're not gonna have major pushes. Maybe get some wins on dark. Get wins on dark. Not to say on TV, main TV because it's gonna naturally happen. Exactly. It's going to happen. You can slowly start to introduce them. Sonny Kiss is a great example. He barely was on TV, but he was 
being, being used on dark. Now he's being brought into TV. TV. He's not necessarily winning on TV, but it's the, you're introducing him from and, taking him from dark, bringing him to TV. Right. Kip Sabian, my theory is this. He was one of those towns that you, you see him on TV, he didn't win a lot, but that was for the first year. We're in a new year now. Exactly. Even though the anniversary did not for a few more weeks, officially, they're announcing um, October 14th. It's about a month from now. Um, will be the official anniversary of Dynamite, is what they're claiming. But All Out is a reset. Basically, when you watch um, Dynamite, it was basically a reset. New storylines. We're moving on from the old storylines. Yeah, yeah. Which is what you should do after a major show, like your WrestleMania. I have it. Like just, I have it. Go ahead, because I know you're going to forget it if I don't. Yes. Uh, Rusev is, basically comes in. He is Kip Sabian's Diesel. That's what, that's kind of going to go with that. All right. That's a similar, I, sim- we were on the same wave. Sim- similar direction. Here's the thing. If you're going to start using Kip Sabian, you bring, pair him with someone who's more recognizable as he starts to win. Yep. Teasing that whole... Eventually, Rusev... Ter- I when mean, is uh, Rusev, sorry, Miro. When is Miro going to turn? Yeah. This whole wedding thing that they sing there, it's just there to introduce the tagline, his his tag of the best man. Yeah. Um, also, what do you think of the, of the blonde hair? Uh, it'll grow on me, I think. I, yeah, I feel the same way. I'm just like, right away, I'm like, eh, it's okay. Gonna, I, think it'll, I think it'll grow on me faster than Cody's did. Yes. I'm still not necessarily a fan of Cody's blonde hair. I... It's grown on me. I, I just can't picture him. Now as I not, can't see him without it. Yeah, because I've seen him for so long. But yeah. I think he looked better without the blonde hair. Yeah. Um, if he went back to his natural hair color, I think I'd, for a, few, a week or two, I'd be like, yeah. whoa, that's weird. It's different. It's weird, man. But I think he still looks better with his other hair. Yeah. Um, but it has grown on me. I think this will grow on me a little bit. Because I didn't actually recognize. I didn't really notice that much until uh, at first. It was his clothes that drove me nuts. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that outfit is like $2,300. Yeah, the the pants. And that's the, over three pieces. Yeah, that, the pants. I don't care if they're Gucci. They were ridic- ridiculous. They looked like pajamas. I don't care about if he came on pajamas. It just looked bad. It really, it really looked like... He woke up like now. I know that he he is a Twitch video game streamer, and he's actually a, a entertaining. I yeah. I have not checked it out just yet, but I will. I've heard he's pretty good on Twitch. Um, and I can't wait to like it. Really does. Other than the it, it, it all being Gucci and super expensive, it did totally look like he had decided that he's like, oh oh, I'm supposed to go out there soon. All right. Sorry, Twitch guys. We I'll be back in about ten minutes. And goes out yeah. there like that's yeah, kind of what it looked like. Um, I think that's what he did. Kind of did that on purpose. <laughs> Other no, than it being super expensive. Now, I, I, now I, what I would love to see though is a time that he's actually backstage doing a Twitch stream, <laughs> playing some games, and then like on camera looks up and he's like, "Oh, five minutes. All right, guys, five minutes. I gotta wrap this up and be out there." And like. You go for like, and even better is someone follows with the camera, <laughs> like how you know, uh, BTE will with Brandon following the young bucks up to uh, Gorilla, and then they go out. Yeah. That's exactly what it does. So that way they can be like, you want to see what what Miro's doing in AEW? Check out Dynamite. So it's a great thing. I I think people are just people want so much of Rusev now that he's not in the company. So yeah. I understand their. But this is not a bad thing. This is going to actually work in his favor. This is, and here's a better thing. He's going to help get someone who is a good young talent get over more and right. use better. Which I think overall is the best thing. And here's the thing. Also, we know from Bischoff's opponent um, thing, people have say in their, their spots. They're not being handed a script saying, this is what you're doing, no questions. Go out there. He had to say, so he okayed this well, whole wedding. What are you talking about? Brody Lee is in charge of everything in the company, and he will throw papers at you if you don't like the script that he came up with. So that's oh, that's why he dyed his hair blonde. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Brody <laughs> Lee's like, you're dyeing your hair bro- blonde. And no, he's no, like, no, no. All right. No, I figure he just dyed his hair blonde because he's blonde and he'll get pushed. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> he's like, thank you. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, if I blunt, if I... He, he ducks down a little bit and he's like, maybe I'm blonde for you today. <laughs> and Brody's like... I like blonde. It reminds me of gold. Speaking of gold, uh, the whole um, brass ring, shove it up your ass, so close to being an, a phenomenal promo. It was so good promo, 
But I'm still waiting for someone to say, you know what? I'm reaching for that. Go to re the, other, the other company, reaching for that stupid brass wing. I don't want that fucking brass wing. I want gold. Because gold is better than brass. Yes. No, not gold is better than brass. Uh, gold is more elite than brass. Yeah, you, know like, what's be you know what's more elite than brass? Gold. All right, we need to move on. But anyway, yes, it was a good little debut. Because now you've shrinked us all the way down to, to six whole minutes. Me? You got in there too. I just said what I needed to say. So did I. You ramble. Okay, so you. ratings. We're actually covering all four shows that happened this week. So no no impact. Sorry. <laughs> you you still don't get counted. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, but your reigns have been taking, yeah. taking the last two weeks. Uh. <laughs> all right. So Monday Night Raw tuned in with 1.72 million for the entire three-hour show. They're going down again. Yeah. Uh, NXT Tuesday night brings it to 838,000 for Super Tuesday 2. Down a little bit. Yeah. About 11,000 people from last week. Then Wednesday night. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I actually like that. AEW comes in on Wednesday night. No competition with a 1.016 million. They, once again, have broken the million. Thank thing. you. We put, called it last week. They are more likely because last week's, they had 900,000, yeah. over 900,000. All out. Everyone is taking credit for it. You know, Evil Uno's 15 seconds on the show. Um, Jericho <laughs> and MJF both, both took, credit. took credit the exact same way, playing oh. off their whole uh, little intro where they basically said, congratulate each other, saying you're going to be you're going to get it back again sometime, walking away, and both calling each other loser under their breath. Loser. <laughs> the loser. Uh, and then on sa uh, Friday, Friday, last Friday, sorry, not tonight, not last night, not not, not tonight, right, right, not right when, now, not right now. Uh, last Friday, the fourth, I think so. Uh, SmackDown destroyed. Everyone with 2.06 million. The heck? Yeah, I mean, well, they have the better storylines. I know. Um, isn't Raw supposed to be the A show? No, SmackDown's supposed to be the A show because it's on Fox um, now. Okay. So, but yes, um, and the ratings, I think they went down for this past week for um, SmackDown, but they weren't down that much. Whereas um, Raw's going down again. Yeah. Like they've been going down the last few weeks again. It's all Paul Heyman's fault for not doing the job that he was fired from. Exactly. <laughs> and just being on being a bum manager on, on air town. On, on Smackdown, Smackdown instead. Exactly. It, no, see, that's why. Everyone's tuning in to see Paul Heyman. Exactly. On Smackdown. Um, I'm just going to show you the, the Superdome can only last so it's long. It's Thunderdome. Whatever. Hey, editor, can you go ahead and give me, like, all of the bass whenever I say Thunderdome? If you Thank do, you so much. If you do that, um, you don't need the, all that Oh, yeah, you do, because you have no bass in your voice. I'm all about that bass. All that, that bass. bass. <laughs> no trouble. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's keep going with uh, WWE stuff. They released a few people, all backstage people. We... No talent people. yet. 70 people. 70? Yep. Uh, it's basically everyone who was furloughed from back I, in uh, I only April. got three names here. Yeah, because no one else has come f have been announced. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Whew. But it's, it's all these people who were uh, <laughs> released were furloughed back in April who were not brought back. These are departments, not talent that we know of yet. Yeah. But the three names are Gerald Briscoe. Yes. Uh, hopefully he goes to Ring of Honor and hooks up with his two sons. Uh, then we've got Sarah Stocks. I don't know what she's stalking, but you know she that was, might have um, been a good reason why she, she got fired. She was a uh, um, Sarita in, in TNA. Okay, um, I remember uh, her. And then the the surprise for me, straight up surprise, WWE fired the IRS. I didn't think they had the power to do this, but they went ahead and did this. I'm kidding. It's uh, Jim Rotunda, you know Bo Dallas and Bray Wyatt's father. Uh, this I'm gonna call it now. Bray Wyatt's never getting a push again. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're we're never the fiend will never be a thing ever again. 
It, it's Alexa Bliss isn't Sister Abigail. <laughs> you know, all of that storyline's... We uh, saw it happen. Payback. Uh, no. The you squash mean, started to happen there. You mean Alexa Bliss is not Sister Bliss? Si- oh, yeah, sorry. Sister Bliss? <laughs> Even though I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great name if she... They continue that line. But yeah. anyway, um, yeah, it's surprising. I'm sorry, Jim. But for don't forget, WWE had to cut fire these people because they are on record for high the highest profits of all time. I know. They had to fire people. You know, you, is, you can't can't have the highest, uh, you know, uh, pro- profits uh, for a quarter and still uh, for the year for the year and be able to hang on to all of this talent. Yeah. And pay people. I'm yeah. Shoot. Nope. So. But yeah, so fuck you, WWE. Yeah. All right, next up, still within the WWE universe, NXT UK. They're having uh They're the coming f- they're coming back next week. Yep. Um they're gonna have two championship matchups, but the thing we want to talk about is they're having a tournament. Oh. It's called the Heritage Cup. So it's the first ever. Yes. Okay. The Heritage Cup, and it's going to be under it's not, I can't remember the rules names. But it's it's <laughs> Queensbury rules. I don't know. It's weird. It's like it's these rounds. Like it's two out of three fall matchups. Okay. There's, um, there's six rounds. Whoever has the most wins in after the six rounds is the winner. And apparently, then they will defend the Carriage Cup as a championship going forward. Okay. I, I'll get. I get it. I mean, yeah. if, if, if they're gonna be c- carrying a big trophy around, that's a little weird. Um, if they're gonna do a championship belt, okay, I, I think it'd be better. But yeah. Um, I I think that they 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 could do a tournament every year, yeah. and you get as the tournament winner you yes. get the cup, but there's a belt that you that you have that you have for the rest of the year. Yeah, something that like would that. work a whole lot better. But who knows? Uh, I mean, I think it's a great idea that they're doing something different. Something different. Kind of like a certain company in Japan who just did a king, a pro wrestling, type match of um, yeah. championship, but then a little bit. It's under British. It's a, I guess it's under a common type of rule set for in British wrestling. I don't I'll, know. I'll have to look it yeah. up. But it's a, uh, hey, you know what? I'll reach out to my best friend Simon Miller. Bring it up if it's, they're bringing something, something new to the package. Great. I yeah. think it's a good thing they're bringing that back. Awesome. So, uh, speaking of champion stuff, Finn Balor is your new NXT champion. We already knew that was going to happen because he was the... Adam Cole just lost it. Yep. It, he was the longest reigning. There's no way they were going to put the belt back on him. Sorry. Yeah, I know. But it was still good. Congratulations, Finn. Um, two-time NXT champion. Yes. Um, the question, will can he break Adam Cole's record? I still feel that Gargano should have gotten the... No. The championship. So that way he holds it for more than 51 days. <laughs> He's in total has not held it for two months. <laughs> he like, hasn't held any championship for more than a month. I know. He needs to hold it for longer. I mean, that's a story that they're telling, they've been telling. Eventually they will give him a, a bigger run, I, yeah. I'm sure. But what else do we have on there? We have New Japan uh, has, is the G1 bracket. Tournament yes. bracket is out ladies and gentlemen uh we have a grand total of six minutes tim and we (sighs) there are six minutes left in the match uh i can't look it up my phone is way too far down on the battery right Mm now so tim can can you bring that up for me yeah tamatanga is questioning whether or not he's into it he's in it i want to know who else is there yeah. Kazuchika Okada, isn't it? This is G1 Climax number 30, by the way. Oh, wow. So, really? let's see. 30. Hmm. Okay, block. The block. The block. Hold on. Hold on. Attack on block 13? No, okay, that's precinct. Blo- I was going to read the... Cause they have matches, but I haven't seen what the blocks are. Let me just... Yeah, let's go by match. Okay, so from the first night up, we have Yota. T- oh, yeah, for gonna, gonna, I'll let you read it from my phone. Because <sighs> <laughs> you're going to. I'll just butcher it. Hold on a second. This, uh, the blocks matchups have all the me- members in it. Participants. Oh, I. All right, I block A. <laughs> we have Kota Ibushi, Jeff Cobb, Kazuchika Okada. 
Tomohiro Ishii, Will Ospreay. Frick yeah! Yeah, he's back, thank God. Uh, also, it's nice to see Jeff Cobb in here, too. Yep. Uh, Shingo Takagi, Minoru Suzuki, who's having the greatest, like, <laughs> supposed twilight of his career. Um, and then we've got Tai Chi. Jay White is in here. Yep. Yes. Uh, Yujiro Takahashi. Uh, and in B Block, we've got Hiroshi Tanahashi. Juice Robinson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Hiroki Goto. Uh, Toro Yano. Yoshihashi. Tetsuya Naito. Oh, okay. Sonata. Zack Sabre Jr. I, for me, I'm like, yes, all the people who have been stuck out of this company yeah. for a while, they're back. Uh, Kenta. Yeah. And evil. Yes. Uh, one of the things, the reason why a lot of people haven't been in Japan is because of the two-week quarantine. You have to. If you're only going over for a week tour it's and you're going back home, there's no reason to then have to quarantine again when you get home. It's just not worth your time to do it. But when you go to Japan now and you're going to be doing a tournament for a month, you're able to... I hate your phone. There's no swipe left. I accidentally swiped right and got out of it. No. And I'm like, uh, no, go back. And it's like, oh... It's an you... iPhone, 7, 97, um, it, iPhone 7. It doesn't let you go back. I think that's an 8 feature. <laughs> I'm too poor for an 8. Which is weird because I have it part of my J Galaxy J3. You're terrible. How dare you not have an iPhone? You're, you're gonna I have a cheap knockoff Samsung Galaxy made by Samsung, you're gonna, and it does better than yours. You're gonna Just burn. Say. You're gonna burn in purgatory. Oh really? All right. Well, <laughs> in that case, you need to wrap the show up. I refuse. We're going for 148 hours. Oh, that's okay. right. Anyway, but no, it's good to see these people back. But again, like I was saying. Having them go, uh, tournaments going on for a month, you have it makes sense to actually come in. No, I was serious. You need to wrap this I'm show. I'm going up, to like, just, right now. I'm getting to my point. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let us know down in the comments section what you thought of all out. Uh, since it's right there, go ahead and give it a video, a th this video a thumbs up. You are been listening for an hour and a half, so mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> and since it's right there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Ding! Ring that bell. Ding, ding! And get bent like WWE's stupidity and idiocy and greed for firing people during a fucking pandemic and 5G! I would have gone with, you know, running over time.